Hey guys, Keaton here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be unboxing, reviewing, and comparing the brand new 2013 Retina MacBook Pros in the 13 and 15 inch configurations. Now just right out of the gate here, these are definitely worth the upgrade from the 2012 models, which just were the new release of the whole Retina MacBook Pro line, and I've absolutely loved these laptops. I think they are really tailored to professionals and prosumers this year, and that's, that is kind of why you'd want to go ahead and buy a laptop, especially with that gorgeous display. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into that box to see what you get inside your brand new investment. So now digging into the unboxing part of this video, we're just going to be unboxing the 15 inch model mainly because you receive the same stuff in the 13 inch model and the only real difference is the size and configurations of the laptop. So cutting the plastic and digging into the box, we are greeted immediately with the 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina model and it just looks absolutely gorgeous in terms of aesthetics, but let's go ahead and set that aside and keep digging in. You'll see your literature pack which on the front says designed by Apple in California. Then inside there you're going to receive your hello guide which is just a brief synopsis of what you'll be receiving with this brand new awesome computer. You'll get your product and info guide which just goes a little bit more in depth with the warranty and just FCC regulations. You'll get a microfiber cleaning cloth to go and wipe that gorgeous display you have and the beloved Apple stickers in which I hope you're buying the computer more than just the Apple stickers as it's something I love to go and put on all my decals that don't really feature Apple products. Up next you receive your power brick with MagSafe 2. So what this is going to enable you to do is just charge charge the laptop is that's that's a pretty crucial part or you can't really use it more than just the initial amount of charging time that Apple ships the computer with. And then finally you're greeted with an extension cord so you can go ahead and slot that into the power brick and use your laptop at a longer, a longer range than you could with just the standard amount of length that comes on the power brick. So now moving into the review portion of this video, we're going to be hitting some main topics as that's what I feel like is a pretty big buying decision for me as a consumer. So first we'll be talking about hardware and specifications, the software, battery life, the display, the graphics card, is. there's definitely a difference between the 13 and 15 inch model. And then we'll be talking about the portability and then my final overall recommendation in terms of which computer is best for which type of consumer. So up first, let's go ahead and talk about the hardware and specifications on the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina models. So now getting to the hardware side of things is this is the same on both the 13 and 15 inch model. We have our first MagSafe 2 connection on the Retina MacBook Pros and then you receive your two Thunderbolt 2 ports which will enable some hard drives that are proprietary to Thunderbolt or some just additional monitor displays if that's your thing. Then you have your first USB 3.0 port, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and your dual mic port. Flipping over to the right side of things here we have our second USB 3.0 port. We have our SD card reader and I'm super happy they included it on both the 13 and 15 inch model. And then you have your HDMI connection which will enable you to go ahead and plug it up to a big display and you don't have to buy that adapter that Apple requires you to buy if you want to hook it up to the Thunderbolt connection. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the specifications on the 13 inch model. So in terms of specifications on the 13 inch model here, it starts off with a 2.4 gigahertz dual core i5 Intel Haswell chip. It's the new Haswell chip from Intel. It's super fast and it really helps conserve battery life. It features four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So that's something we'll discuss a little bit later on in the video as it is one of the lower points of the 13 inch model. It features 128 gigabytes of SSD or flash storage. The Intel Iris graphics card, again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. Then it features up to nine hours of battery life. So that's pretty great. And then it features that gorgeous display, the 13 inch display coming in at a pixel resolution of 2560 by 1600. It features the brand new two Thunderbolt 2 ports. So that's going to be great for higher speeds. And then features the 802.11 AC Wi-Fi adapter and Bluetooth 4.0. So in terms of specs on the 15 inch or the beast of the show here, it features a 2.3 gigahertz quad core Intel i7 Haswell chip. Again, the Haswell chip is definitely a big plus to this computer itself. It features 16 gigabytes of RAM, features a 512 gigabyte uh, flash storage or SSD. Up next, it features the Intel Iris Pro graphics followed by dedicated graphics, which is the NVIDIA GeForce 750M, which is a two gigabyte graphics card. It can also get up to nine hours of battery life, so that's a huge plus for me. Features again, the two Thunderbolt 2 ports released this year at the MacBook conference, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi adapting, followed by Bluetooth 4.0. So both of these computers feature some similarities, but definitely they're not the same because one of them has dedicated graphics and one of them does so let's go and check out the software, which is uh, OS 10 10.9 Mavericks. 
So up next is the software. So both of these machines ship and you'll be receiving OS 10 Mavericks, which is the new software from Apple. And just before we get into the features and what it kind of includes, this is free to download, by the way, and Apple's really changing the market by offering free software. As in the past, they kind of made you pay around 30 to $40 to go and download it. So I'm super stoked that I was able to download this for free on my iMac back there, but I was able to get it free on my brand new uh, 2013 Retina MacBook Pros. So in terms of features here, I can kind of see OS 10 Mavericks really looking a lot like iOS 7. It has a nice polished look to it, and there's some features in there that are sort of minimal. They're nothing. There's nothing that's really going to change the game or anything like that. But it's just nice features to have. So, for example, iCloud Keychain stores all your passwords, your credit card numbers, and you can be a little bit concerned, as some people are very concerned about giving people more data than they really need to. But it keeps it all secure. It's encrypted, and it's just an easier way to go ahead and just shop online. And that's something I really do like. Up next is iBooks for Mac and. <laughs> I have to read for school, and I'm not a big fan of reading books uh, as a whole. So to be able to read it on a piece of a, a computer that I really love back there, I'm able to do that nicely. And iBooks was definitely one of those things I was super stoked about. Next is Maps. I love how I can be able to go ahead and pinpoint a special place that I want to go and travel to. Go ahead and send it to my iPhone, and then when I'm ready to go on on my commute, I can go ahead and just swipe across my phone and just get going. So that's just super easy and simple. And there's tons of other great features in OS 10, 10.9 Mavericks. So if you guys want to see a full video where all the new features are in there and telling you what we see in 10.9 that's just new, go and give this video a like because it lets me know you guys want that, and I'd be more than happy to go and do it for you. So overall, I'm a big fan of Mavericks this year. There's tons of new features, and I think it's just great on two new beasts like this. So up next here is the display. So this is definitely a main buying point of the, either the 13 inch model or the 15 inch model. And if you're not really looking for a good display or you're just looking for something that'll get you by, this is definitely not the computer for you as you're gonna be paying an extra premium for that gorgeous high pixel dense display. So I gotta say on both the 13 and 15 inch models, I was just, my eyes were melted with how great all, every piece of content looked on here. Whether it was gaming, editing some video, taking pictures and just examining detail after the fact, this computer can do it so successfully in both places. I was really happy that it just looked great. This is uh this is a computer that I would I knew what I was getting into, but I didn't know how good it was gonna be. I I had a uh, a 15 inch retina model from last year and I love that computer a lot but when I used it this year and had the Haswell, the better battery, the dedicated graphics and just better graphics card, I just found that passion that I kind of lost a little bit as the MacBook Air is just super thin. But getting back to topic here the screen on this thing is just, it's eye melting. That's all I can really describe it as. Uh, just on the 15 inch, you're gonna be getting a few more pixels as it's just, they need to go ahead and occupy the little bit more space with it, but that's not gonna take away from the quality at all. It's still gonna be looking absolutely great on both the 13 and 15 inch models. So I gotta tell you guys, if you guys want a higher, a higher dense display, you guys want something that's serious, you're really getting into your work or just want a great computer as a whole, definitely check out either the 13 or 15 inch model and we'll get down to it a little bit later in terms of which model is right for you. So again, super, super big fan of the display. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. So moving on here, we're going to discuss the battery life as this is definitely a big change from last year's models. So the new Haswell chips kind of showed a lot of promise with the brand new MacBook Airs. In some cases, I was able to get up to 13 hours of battery life, which is just absolutely mind-blowing, mainly because we have not really seen a laptop that can last more than just 10 hours. So... I gotta tell you, I was very satisfied with the battery on here. Apple claims nine hours on both the 13 and 15 inch models here, and I was able to achieve around there. It can definitely get you through a full day. I would consider an average day or work day that you'll be using the computer around six to eight hours here. So I was able to receive about eight hours on the 15 inch model and about seven hours and 30 minutes on the 13 inch model. And I did some rigorous testing. I would use it casually for the first few days. Keep in mind, I did use this laptop and I'm reviewing this off a of five day experience here. So the 13 inch model, I was using it just a leisurely for a few days then I went hardcore with doing some editing gaming watching some extensive movies as I, I'm a big movie watcher and I was able to get the, some pretty good battery life in there for the 15 inch model I was really doing some gaming as the dedicated graphics is a big plus for me some video editing and it just looked good because of the display and I was very impressed with the battery life because eight hours of battery life that's definitely more than a work day for me but I wish, I really do wish, sometime in the future we'll have a laptop that can go all day through rigorous testing. So overall, super impressed with the battery life and I was able to at least get a work day and possibly a little bit more. So up next is the graphics card. This is where there's a breaking point between the 13 inch and the 15 inch laptops. So starting off with the 13 inch here, it features the Intel Iris graphics card. So it's definitely a step up from the MacBook Air's graphics card, which is the Intel HD 5000. So I gotta say I was 
pretty impressed with how the 13 inch could handle graphics and just gaming. It's not the best by any means as there's no real dedicated graphics like we see on the 15 inch model, but can definitely handle your tasks. Just the only trade off is you can't really get things done that are high video extensive, such as editing in the quickest amount of time like the 15 inch. Now transitioning over to the 15 inch laptop, that thing just flies. The dedicated graphics followed by the Intel Iris Pro graphics, they really help in conjunction with one another and give you a nice pleasurable experience when you're gaming, you're editing, and just things along those lines. And I was able to actually do a test and you guys are watching it right now where I edited a one minute video of just an Android figure on one of my new desks uh, that I'm filming on and the 15 inch just whipped through that thing super quickly and then about 30 to 45 seconds later the uh, the 13 inch laptop could finally get it processed. So that's just an easy way to go and tell you what dedicated graphics can really do and how much of a difference there is. And it's kind of sad to see that Apple puts, they kind of put an ultimatum in the consumer's decision here, whether if you want a real powerful computer that can handle video editing and graphics like super quickly, you're probably gonna have to get the 15 inch model as the 13 inch model can be slow and can actually drop a few frames while gaming. I played some Crisis 3, a very high graphic extensive game, and it could handle it perfectly, just absolutely perfectly on the 15 inch model, but there was a few drop in frames and couldn't get the highest resolution on the 13 inch model. But then again, it just comes down to what's your budget? Are you willing to get the higher end model to go and suit your needs? Or are you just someone who needs a computer with a great looking display, great battery life, and you just want something that's just gonna overall be great and don't really need the extended graphics performance? So last but definitely not least is portability. So I found with both of these laptops, they both feel great in the hands and I love the weight of both of them as having a nice weight to a product is a big thing for me when I buy pretty much anything as I like the product to feel solid and the weight definitely does justify that for me. So with the 13 inch model, I felt like I could get a little bit more intimate with it. I felt that I could just keep it, make it my own and just get real personal with it as the size and weight was just absolutely perfect for me. But then I took a step back, I looked at the specifications in the 13 inch model and then I just said nope it's definitely not happening because I need that dedicated video card I need the dedicated graphics I need the upgrade so then I was forced to kind of go ahead and switch over to the 15 inch model as it does feature that two gigabyte dedicated graphics card and that's not a problem I don't have a problem using a bigger model it's just the weight and the size I'm not too I'm not really big into it but overall, I was definitely a fan of the portability on both of them. I think Apple really has it down to a science. These laptops are super thin. They're not MacBook Air thin, but they're definitely thin to the point where it's not too bulky in terms of that standard. So I think Apple has really done something that I like and I don't like. Coming from a capitalist standpoint, I think they have it down. They're going to make you spend more money as these parts are not interchangeable and the only real good dedicated video graphic specs are on the 15-inch model. As the 13-inch model just features the general stuff and if you want to get a general computer with a great display and battery life go with the 13 inch model so Apple I wish you would incorporate the great looking specs and just have it all on the 13 inch model And if you do that I'll definitely be a customer for life on the MacBook Pro Retina line so overall if I needed to recommend a computer to a certain type of consumer it all comes down to do you need the dedicated graphics card and do you need the extra two inches for screen real estate if you don't Go ahead and check out the 13 inch model. You will be stunned by how great the screen is, how great the battery life is, and how great the new Haswell chipset is. And believe me, you will not be looking back at any other laptops that don't feature such a high res display. And I think the 13 inch I could get a little bit more intimate with as I've already stated. And it just had that perfect weight for me and I just felt like I could get all cozy with a nice blanket and just start working from there. But when I again took a step back and I said, I need a dedicated graphics card, I was forced to go and check out the 15 inch model as that's all it really is featured on. So the 15 inch model can just get absolute work done. I loved it. I like the weight on it too. I like the extra inches you get in screen real estate too. And I just felt with the dedicated graphics card, video and gaming tasks, they just absolutely fly. It's, it's like a jet plane, that's what we're gonna call it. And it's just so remarkably fast. It's definitely an upgrade from last year. So it just comes down to, do you need the extra screen real estate and the dedicated graphics card? If so, go ahead and check out the 15 inch model. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we unboxed, reviewed, and compared the brand new 2013 13 and 15 inch Retina MacBook Pros. I had an absolute blast doing this video. And for the 13 inch model you saw in this video, it's the absolute baseline one, and that comes in at around $1,299. Apple went ahead and dropped the price last year a few hundred dollars, so woohoo for that. And then for the 15 inch model you saw here, it's the middle one on the totem pole. 
it came in at around $2,699. And that's all before tax. And if you guys want to check out pricing and availability, I hope you guys will, as these computers are definitely a must have, but they are very pricey. And it's, it's because of the screen and the new specs you're getting on there. But pricing and availability can be found right below that like button in the description below. And while you're there, go and show the like button just a bit of love as it lets me know that you guys enjoyed this video and you want more content on the brand new Retina MacBook Pros. And if that's the case, I'd be more than happy to do it. And while you're pondering on which video topics you guys want me to do on the new MacBook Pros, let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Mac user, a PC user, or even a pencil and paper user, because if that's the case, it is okay. I still write notes down, but it's it's very frequent, and I would love to know what other videos you guys want me to make comparing these brand new beasts together to kind of determine which one is best for you in which type of field. Finally, go ahead and subscribe to the channel to be first when I to be first and notified when I produce a brand new video. We have so much more coming from Apple. We have the iPad Mini 2, we have the iPad Air, and then we have the Mac Pro, which is just absolutely beast and completely blows the doors off any type of piece, any type of Mac that I own. I almost said PC there. So if you guys wanna go and do that, there's a button in the middle of your page. It says S-U-B-S-R-I-B-E, -E, which spells subscribe, or there's an annotation on screen right here, which you can go ahead and click, and it's free, so it will let you know when I produce a brand new video. Thank you guys once again, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.